Welcome back to another episode of the Fan Showdown, the series on YouTube where you out there try your best to design what you think, you know, the best PC cooling fan is. And I, I will admit, last episode I did notice a lot of people were uh, were not thrilled with the uh, with the print quality. Um, and I will admit I did make changes. I changed the nozzle size and the different settings and um, yeah, it, it looked good on like this Alien and this Benchy, but when when it came down to uh, the really thin details on those fans, didn't translate too well, uh, and you weren't very thrilled about it. So I did revert back to kind of my previous settings and nozzle sizes. Hopefully things look better. I'll let me know. I'll, I'm, I'm sure you will. I'll check it down below, but I think things turned out a little better, but you'll be the judge of that. This is the 92120 and it was created by Q. Q said that the base inspiration for this fan design was the 92 by 38 millimeter fan design. And after designing that 92 millimeter fan disc, he decided to put a ring around those blades and then fill in the remaining space with 10 additional small blades. And what you're left with is actually a pretty cool looking fan in my opinion. But uh, what I like the most about this fan is actually not the, the blade design, it's the hub design. Now for reference, the drawings I provide for you to use as a guide for the fan showdown showing like critical dimensions, the hub diameter is 37.25, which is pretty much line to line with uh, what the actual hub is, meaning that when I print them out, for the most part, they don't fit. And I do that kind of as a, an insurance policy, so to say, that even if you miss the diameter by making it a little too big, uh, it still will fit. Normally I'd take those fans, I open it up a little bit and I get the proper fitment so everything kind of goes on there nice and snugly and holds on and is as flat as possible. Q didn't just make a simple circle hub like we all do, like I've done. Instead he used these pegs and these pegs are tangent with that diameter of 37.25, which means that when I printed this out, initially I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I took the fan and I took the new print without any post-processing and I was like, oh, it fit together beautifully. It holds together with just the right amount of force. It fits on there just perfectly. It was a really good idea. Uh, one I think I might steal to use in the future. So this Q, very clever. Uh, the fan also looks cool. We'll see how it does, but the hub, top tier. Next up, we have Napmaster C and his fan, Involute. Napmaster C said the inspiration for his fan was the high flux isotope reactor, or more specifically, the fuel used within that reactor. This reactor uses U308 fuel that's blended with an aluminum powder to create what they call compacts. Those compacts are then placed into um, aluminum frames and then those frames are sandwiched between aluminum plates and they're drawn out to be like these really thin or thinner plates. And then that thin plate with that fuel impregnated into it is shaped into a specific shape called an involute. Now the reason this is done is because this involute shape is unique in that it can be stacked around a circle and the the gap between the, the two blades or the two plates of fuel remains constant, which is really good in a reactor if you wanna use those gaps as water channels. Now in a fan, this constant gap that you can see in the blades here, I don't know how that's gonna translate into cooling potential, but it's very interesting and there's actually a very good video uh, about this reactor and it talks about the fuel and stuff if you're interested in, in watching it. I had actually watched this in the past and I thought it was very interesting that they linked to the same video and used that reactor kind of design in their fan. I'll leave that link down below if you want to learn more. I think it's worth watching. It was very interesting. And also, Natmaster C said after he made these blades, he noticed that they're very thin and they curve quite a bit. So he decided to connect them out on the, the ends to give them a little bit more rigidity, which is a good idea because we've seen fans kind of like this, not this specific design, but a lot of them that use like the golden ratio. They're very thin and very long. And when they start to spin up, they kind of just expand outwards and, and it ends in a fail. So that was a good call on your part. Now from super complex, like I don't, like a nuclear reactor, it's about as complex as it gets to, it's about as simple as you can get. This is called the Simple 13 and it was made by MK. And that's all I know about it. That was, I pretty much got no information on this. I was sent an email with this fan, Simple 13. Um, I think they provided like a, a, an estimate of how many CFM it would do. And that was it. So about as simple as it gets. It's, it's a thin light fan, so it should do pretty good. Now last, but definitely not least, is Double J, which was created by JJ Shin. JJ said they wanted their fan to look like a jet engine and noticed that a lot of fans, when they spin up on the smoke test, kind of throw the air out towards the sides and everybody knows that that's not a good idea. And I've actually seen this as a, a quite a common comment people say when they submit their fans that they notice the fan pushing air out to the sides and everybody's trying to 
find ways to reduce that? Well, JJ's idea was to build these really tall walls. JJ is also hoping that this fan in the center will kind of act like a blower fan, that any air drawn in towards the center or the hub of this fan will be blown outwards and then into the main airstream and hopefully improve overall performance. JJ's actually got quite a bit of ideas going on here. He's got these tall walls to reduce the outward flow of air. He's got this hub that's hopefully gonna act like a blower fan. It's in stark comparison to like the Simple 13 where we don't really know much about it. We just know that it has very thin, tiny blades and that's it. Which one will do better? Uh, I guess we'll have to find out. The Double J came in around 50.4 dBA. The Simple 13 came in around 48.1 dBA. The Involute came in around 51 dBA. And the 92-120 came in around 47.5 dBA. They all actually had pretty decent output. They're not, none of them are super loud or hard to listen to. They're all relatively similar. Will that remain the same in the smoke test? Again, they all did pretty well. Nothing, nothing stood out to me. They all seemed to perform relatively well. However, pushing air through a radiator is a, it's a much different beast. The 92-120 came in at 464 feet per minute. The Involute came in at 327 feet per minute. The Simple 13 came in at 479 feet per minute. And the Double J came in at 397 feet per minute. Placing the Simple 13 in first place, the 92-120 in second place, the Double J in third place, and the Involute in fourth. And overall, they finished first, third, eighth, and ninth, respectively. Oh, that means that the Simple 13 not only did the best today, but it uh, did best overall. It beat out the Cheater, finally. Uh, which is something we haven't really been able to say since like season four. But yeah, the Cheater is now in second place. It did still fall behind the A12X25, but out of fans that you've created, this is now number one, the Simple 13. Now, if you want to submit your own fan design to the Fan Showdown, make sure to head down to the description below. There's a lot of different links to different references. There's a, there's a file that shows you all the critical dimensions you need to maintain to make sure your fan fits on the A12X25 hub. Also, there's information on where you need to send your fan designs. I need at least an STL file sent to the Fan Showdown at gmail.com. Thank you all for watching. Hope you had a good time. I'll see you in the next one.